Okay, here's generator. This is a very old Coleman Pi Power 5000, uh, Power Mate 5000. Uh, let's see, I got this back in, I think probably 2000 or maybe 2019. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, 1999 <laughs> or, or 2000. Uh, I've had it for a very long time. It used to be uh, when I was out racing stock cars. Uh, this was the power we used for pit lighting and stuff. So I kept it around for a long time and uh, never had much of a use for it. But uh, when we decided to move out to the Midwest here, I heard you know, storms can knock out power for quite a long time. Haven't had that happen yet, but uh, as a precaution, I brought it with me just in case we ran into one of those scenarios. And uh, everything's kind of got it cleaned up and working really good, but it's just kind of a little sluggish. And there's a couple things we need to do. One, although I've done this a couple times, I rinsed and flushed the gas tank. The gas tank is old. It's chewed up on the inside. It needs to be replaced. Um, and then this assembly right down here this is the governor assembly with the throttle this guy the spring linkage is all messed up and uh from when i used to work on go-karts that will cause your engine to not idle right and everything else and then on top of that can't see it real good but the uh the carburetor the uh, high flow jet is plugged up which causes me to go from choke if I go to a run, it kind of dies out, so I gotta keep it right about there. So we're gonna be replacing that stuff today. We'll go through it a little bit. Hopefully we can get the new gas tank retrofitted in there. Here is the new gas tank. This is, if you just go anywhere and look for a aftermarket gas tank for a generator, this is pretty much your number one thing that pops up. It's a five gallon. Uh, this one is a retrofit kit so uh, by that I mean this is definitely not the one that is on there that I believe is an eight gallon this is a five gallon the difference was this costs uh, I think about seventy dollars off of Amazon and they don't make this one anymore but ones where someone resurrected from a graveyard uh, it's like it was <laughs> It was like $600. It was like the price of a brand new generator. So I wasn't gonna do that. And then the second part is I went, so while I was at Amazon, I went ahead and bought a tune-up kit for this engine, which is a, it's actually a Honda OHV 10 horsepower. Uh, once I put it in there, I came up with this really nice rebuild kit. Comes with new air filters comes with new throttle linkage, fuel filter, fuel shutoff valves, and the most important part, brand new carburetor, and even a new spark plug. Um, this, all this stuff was only $19. Unless you're in a really bind and you, you have to clean the carburetor out, which I've done that several times before. Um, just spend the, the money and get something aftermarket and throw it in there. Okay, I took the hardware off the fuel tank. I'm gonna pull that out first. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the fuel is shut off there. And then I'm gonna take the fuel line out. And I remember there's a couple gallons, there's about two gallons of gas in here. That stuff I'm considering trash. So I'm going to recycle it, which means I'm gonna take it to a place here we got called under the sink. And when it's in the proper container, they will accept old gasoline because this is just, it's dirty and it's not usable at this point. So we're gonna get rid of it. Okay, we got the gas can off, and it's still got about a gallon and a half gas in there. Here's the top of the generator. This is a heat pan, very important that we put this back in there. What that guy is gonna do is that isolates the heat from your muffler from getting back up into that tank, and especially since we're switching back to a steel tank, we're gonna wanna make sure we get that back in there. So one of the things I already know from looking at this well, from when I measured it out, at least, is that this tank is smaller than that one. So we're going to have to come up with a mounting solution for this. So what I think is I'm going to anchor it right back into the side like that. 
and then maybe make a uh, maybe make some brackets to support the other side of the tank. Gonna have to figure that out. Maybe uh, maybe some angle beam, some angle stock would work really good across there, and just run some tech screws down in it. Put some rubber rubber underneath there to keep it from vibrating. And then the let's see, there's the open for the petcock on that side. And then that's where the fuel comes into the carburetor, right there. So they're on the same side. And the last thing is we want to make sure it's down below this bar on each side in case something hits it. We don't want it to hit the gas tank. Okay, starting to take the carburetor apart, taking the screws out of the air intake cover. Of course, it gets jammed in there right at the last second. it does. Wouldn't have it any other way, right? Bingo. Now we get to start checking this Amazon kit, see if I actually got the right stuff. Oh, it looks pretty close. Yep, that actually looks like the right one. This had no pre-filter in it. I don't say why we can't put one in it, but yeah, okay. Interesting. Well, I'm assuming the pre-filter goes on top like that and that's basically to get the big stuff from going in there if you're using it in really heavy dirty areas it keeps all that dirt from getting clogged in there next thing I'm going to do is take these two nuts off and then we'll, right now we're going to take the breather line out of this breather line's important Recycles everything from the crankcase back into there. So I'm going to twist it out of the way like that. Okay, remove those two nuts and pull this cover right off. Set it down here with that stuff. And then here is the carburetor. And we'll go ahead and get this guy out. And as you pull it out, you have to do undo the linkage up here. This is the piece that's kind of like, well, it's a little finicky. You've got to figure it out a little bit. But basically you kind of have to pull and twist. And I think last time I did this, I might have had to remove these two studs here. We're going to figure that out here. Let me get two hands on it. Okay. Just like I thought, these two studs have to come out. I forgot they're actually screws that hold it together. So you see how it's got a, a flat spot right there? That's the head of the screw that's anchoring it to the engine. I believe... I use something like a, what was this? I think this is a, maybe a four millimeter. Yeah, even though it's a, it's a star drive on the end or like a Torx drive on the end, if you use a four millimeter in this particular case, it'll come off of there just like that. I'll get that there. As you can see, there we go. Times two. Okay, we got this guy loose. I got the little tiny spring. It's all buggered up. I got that guy loose. So now it's about, this is kind of like a 3D puzzle and it's got a little grommet on it. So you just kind of have to figure out how to twist it down, twist and pull and get it out of the way. Until it eventually comes off of that guy. Might help hold the other assembly. There we go. Just like that. Now our carburetor is off. Remember, if you're like me, there's still gas in there. Well, I think there's still gas in there. Most of the time when I shut this off, I try to bleed the carburetor dry and let it die on its own. And then I like making YouTube videos at the same time. It really helps me when I go to put stuff back together to remember how everything was put in there. So I'm just gonna, since I have a new spring, I'm just gonna pry this guy off. And out of there. And then this one maybe may prove to be a little more difficult than I had thought. I might have to bend this 
arm up to get it off. Or I don't want to, but you can take the whole lever off by removing this guy and pulling it up, but it's keyed in on there very precisely and you have to put it this back in the exact right orientation, otherwise the whole engine will not work good. So I'm gonna try to avoid taking that off for the time being. Well, dang it, I did not want to do this, but I got to pull off that arm, which means we got to spend a lot of time indexing it to make sure everything goes back on right. It is on a spline, but I still want to make sure it's right. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, so you're going to need two things for this, a Sharpie, and then I'm using a mechanics, it's a pick, but I, I'm using it as a scribe here. It should probably work. So first thing we're going to do is on this guy, I'm going to mark exactly where this spring was sitting. So I'm going to draw a straight line to that hole right there, my indicator. And then the next thing, and this is the more complicated of the two, I'm going to draw a line from the center here, straight as an arrow as I can, out right to there. And then just to reinforce that, I'm now going to take my scribe off the ground and I am going to put a little scribe mark in that black line and then line it up with a scribe mark there. So the black line gets you close and then the scribe mark will get you right on top, right on when you look at it. And now I'm going to loosen this bolt up and pull that arm off of there. Okay, for those of you marking your scorecards at home, that nut on the bottom side, I'm going to call it a 10 millimeter. It was a little bit smaller, which means it's probably an imperial measurement, but I don't care. I got metric stuff out, so I'm going to use it. 10 millimeter worked just fine. I'm going to take that guy off, and now I can remove my rod on the other side and start matching the parts up. Well, I got the gasket off of the engine side and I accidentally cut it. So we're gonna find out now if this is the right gasket. Otherwise I might have to run to the hardware store and get some gasket material, maybe the automotive store, get some gasket material, make my own gasket. We're gonna find out. Okay, now time for side by side. Let's try this. All right, there's my gasket that goes on the carburetor. Looks like it's pretty well correct. Here's my gasket, the one I just broke taking off. Hey, look at that, matches right up. So I'm gonna take my old ones, put them over there. Here is my, this is my old throttle linkage, which is governor linkage. Here's the new one. Bend to bend, looks correct. Gotta remember there is adjustment in there, I just don't wanna do it. And then there is the, I can't remember what it's called. I think that's the primary spring and the big one's a secondary. I might have that backwards. But uh, this is actually what I set out to buy. I set out to buy this one. And uh, <laughs> once I got and found out, well, that's $9 for that little spring. And if I just bought the entire kit, it was only $19. So I was like, well, it makes more sense to buy the entire kit. Um, let's see, here is the two carburetors. We're gonna put them side by side and do a little mix up match up here. All right, so if you see the, uh, the stem on this one's plastic, it's meant for multiple tops on it. So it just depends on what model you have, but it's a universal. So it looks correct there. Notice it won't go all the way around on this side, but then again, it's blanked off, so it doesn't even matter on this one. Yep, that looks good, side by side. Old ride, new hotness, right? <laughs> that looks good. Back to my inlet side. That looks good there. Yeah, I think we got a winner. And then depending on the uh, model that this is replacing, you know, it's got a different 
throttle arm or a choke arm, which I think I'm just going to end up using this guy. I don't know, maybe with the top on there. Not quite sure yet. I'm gonna figure that out in just a second here. And then the kit also came with a new spark plug. Haven't verified if this is the right one for the engine or anything yet. And then a new fuel shutoff valve. And then I have some new fuel hosing that I'll use to run to the new one. So I'll get this all put back together now. All right, there's where I got all my rest of my gasket scraped off of there. Everything's nice and clean. So this will be the first guy back on there. And I, of course, will need two hands to... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the primary and secondary throttle linkage or the uh, governor linkage into this guy here. And then since I have the arm off on the engine, I'll just hook it up there when I'm done. First, I'm going to figure out which cap I would need. Okay, so for my particular application, this guy is going to work best. It pretty well mimics the size and shape of the old one. So this is the only thing I don't like here. Wish it was a little different, but 19 bucks, you get what you pay for. You actually have to remove this, the main choke butterfly. You actually have to pull it out of there. Pull it straight out, set it down. And then this guy pulls straight out as well. Now we'll transfer the washer onto that one, put it right back in. Okay, you see I put the foam washer back underneath there and now have that arm there. And now it now pretty much looks exactly like the old one did. We'll test this in full open. We'll put that guy right down on there. And Yep, it clears. Barely, but it clears. Um, if not, this guy can actually come up a little bit. It's still two pieces, so I, mean, I could always just put this down partially and glue it if I don't like the way it fits. All right, let's put the carburetor back on. Actually, a little modification will cause me to do this backwards from what I thought. Um, the primary has one over-curved end and one 90-degree end, and there's a little clevis and hook rod right here that this guy will just go right into, and then that little clevis will spin around and latch into it. So actually, I'll want to put this on the engine first. So that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to go back and put it in this guy and then put this arm back on real quick. Okay, I got my two-hand operator stuff done. So well, that's gonna be right here. See, there's my big spring attached right back where I had it there. My small one's back in the corner. This is the one that's over bent right there. And then I got my witness marks lined back up and tighten the nut down there. So this side's ready to go. Now it's time to put the carburetor on. Ooh. See if I could do this without dropping my phone. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. New carburetor, the gasket that's gonna go on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stab this thing first with the two bolts that go right through there. That way I can make sure everything fits up and when I put the gasket on, I don't have to worry about it like that. And then I can just fit this right inside of here. There we go. Just like that, there we go. I'm gonna grab my trusty four millimeter again. Put a little bit of tension back on these screws. Too much. It is plastic. 
in this gasketed surface. Close this guy all the way up. Now I'm going to attach this spring right here, or this rod. It should go straight down inside. All right, so I got the linkage installed. This guy is pulled pretty tight. <clears throat> um, got the end snap there. Basically what I had to do was I had to use a needle file and round out that hole a little bit because the tolerance was super tight to the point where when you um, open the throttle all the way up like it is right now, it, you couldn't even get that spring action to happen. So you're effectively eliminating the, the governor altogether. So we don't want to do that. So I also want to run this without the fuel tank on it for a little bit first because I don't like the way this assembly is. Everything seems too tight. It may be just fine. It may fire right back up where I left it, but I want to have it open at least enough to move this spring down if I need to. And uh, that'll put less tension on it. But we won't know that until it fires up. Basically, when it fires up, if it if it tries to run the engine, like if I let go right now, this would be full throttle. If it tries to run the engine at full throttle, I know that spring is too tight. You gotta hold this assembly back and set your uh, idle speed screw till it idles fine. And then if you let go of it and it wants to accelerate on you, you have to start moving this spring down until you find that balance. I don't like doing that because it's a long process, but I do what I need to do. Next thing I put on the air cleaner. All right, ready to put the air cleaner back on. So there's the gasket. I'll hang that guy down on there. And then here's the cover. Remember the side with the uh, crankcase tube is gonna go up. And then we'll go ahead and start the nuts. Run them down in there. And from here, we're pretty much done. Put the new air cleaner on, tighten the screws down everywhere. And while it's kind of snugged up like that, I can kind of go through and put this tube back in the back there. So the crankcase has, once again, has positive ventilation. Saves on the gaskets and everything else down inside there. Okay. Okay, air cleaner's back on. Looks like it does rub a little bit. It's nothing that we can't live with though. Linkage is all set up. I went ahead and just replaced the spark plug. Uh, still not happy about the linkage, but I'm gonna try to put a fuel line to it through from the gas tank. The uh, just a feeder gas tank that I have. And we'll try to fire this up and see how it runs next. Okay, taking the fuel gauge and put it down on there. Two screws came with the package. The fuel cap, nothing too fancy there. It goes on or we'll the covering later. And I screwed the petcock in at the bottom. <clears throat> orientated it and then the nuts independent of that. So uh, it looks like it came out good. So now we'll hook this guy up and set it on top of here. I'm still messing with the throttle linkage on here, but I need a constant fuel source. Putting a little bit in and running it isn't working. Okay, so I got some fuel in it, got it running for a little while. Seems to be running okay. That secondary, the big secondary spring inside there. Couldn't quite find the happy spot, probably just because wear of a lot of things. So next thing we're gonna have to do is look into mounting the fuel tank. So right now it's sitting on that sheet metal barrier inside there, and I don't want that. So I've got about, that's about 10 millimeters of spacing, not much. It's something if I wanted to, I could get a the OEM used just tech screws down through there. So it's like I could get a tech screw and a stack of washers or a one inch spacer um, and put that underneath there on that side. 
that would take care of that because they would go in kind of crooked, but okay. But then the other side here, I've got a good gap to take care of. So I've got to figure that part out next. You ever want to know if these little inline filters are doing their job, just break one open after you're done using it. All that stuff right there is what came out. That's just uh, some rust and other little debris that have piled up from that old tank. Okay, so I went to the hardware store, got some uh, strapping type deals just from the uh, framing area. Uh, spent a four dollars on a couple pieces and got some sheet metal tech screws. Rounded off the edges. That way is nice. Uh, trimmed the fuel line down so it was a nice straight shot. And yeah, it's pretty much all done. I spaced it up a little bit just to get it off that sheet metal pan. Underneath there, I have a little bit of a air break between it, not much. But uh, yeah, I'm not a, I'm a functionalist. I'm not a perfectionist by any means. So I know I get a lot of people, oh my gosh, that's, what would you do? It's not, you know, the most I use this generator is just starting it up, running it once a month just to make sure it still works. So uh, not bad, you know, for 80 bucks. Got the loping out of it, got a nice fresh clean gas tank back out of it. And, and now I could just start it up and run it. And it works pretty good. I already hooked my uh, air compressor up to it and let it charge. Uh, that's what, if you do store generators, always turn them on once a, once a month. Let it idle for a little bit and then put it under a good load. Run some lights, run an air compressor, run something off of it. So you don't get that, that alternator doesn't just sit there and uh, stack up. You don't want that. Well, it's not the best, but it's what I got. It's a nice little uh, midday project there. Take up a couple hours and get stuff back up and running. Uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. Leave some comments down below and stay safe out there. Bye.